I've just finished fishing on what has been a fantastic day targeting river predators. Ben, the cameraman, got down here first thing this morning and he set me a challenge to try and catch on as many different models of Salmo hard baits as possible. It's been an action-packed day. I've caught a few different species on a few different models as well. And to find out what species I caught and what lures I caught on, carry on watching. Here we go. Oh, that's a nice perch. <clears throat> Don't want to let it get in that snag. Oops. Oh, oops. Oh. <laughs> it's in. <laughs> so I was just explaining to Ben, the cameraman, that uh, this is a slightly slower stretch of river and it's a little bit deeper here. So I've just changed to a bullet. And uh, within a couple of casts, I've just been uh, fishing it on a slow, steady retrieve, and this fish nailed it. Some of these small river perch can be absolutely immaculate, and this one certainly is. I'm gonna get it back now, and hopefully there might be a few more down there. In again. Oh, the perch are switched on this morning. <laughs> Just about to explain to you how I like to fish the bullhead in small rivers like this, and I was interrupted by this fish on just my first cast after I released the last fish. So once I get this back, um, second take, I'll explain how I fish it. Small rivers like the one we're fishing today are the perfect environment for bullheads and one of my favourite Salmo crankbaits to use on small rivers like this one is the bullhead. So there's a few different sizes and diving depths available in the range. I'll start with the smaller models. So these are both four centimetres. There's a shallow diving model and a slightly deeper diving model, which I've been using today, as the depths of the river here are around about six to seven foot. And this is just very lightly tapping the bottom. So it's getting down to the perfect depth where the perch are likely to be. On slightly larger rivers, I find myself using the six centimetre model a little bit more often. So again, there's a shallow and a deep diving model. Uh, the deep diver runs to around about 12 foot, especially when fished on a, a light, fine braid. So uh, it really gets down deep and uh, is ideal for fishing deep pools where you're likely to find perch, chub and zander. The shallow divers are also available in sinking options as well. So if you cast into structure, such as an overhanging bush or tree, you can cast your sinking crankbait to it, let it fall underneath, which is where the fish are, are likely to be, holding up under cover like that, and then begin your retrieve, and that's often when you'll get a take. When the rivers are running crystal clear, I tend to prefer using more natural, duller colours that mimic the bullet perfectly. So these two are great options. Um, you've got the standard bullet colour and then also hot bullet, which is what I've just caught the fish on this morning. It's got a nice reddy yellow belly, which shows up really nicely. And uh, sometimes I think that little bit of colour can just switch them on. Another couple of great natural colours that are worth trying in clear water as well. A sparkling bullet, which has got like a, a little bit more of a pinky belly to it. And then red tail shiner, which is kind of like a chromy colour with a little black dot at the back and a little bit of red just to catch their attention. When fishing in coloured water, I tend to fish a little bit brighter, something that's going to stand out to the fish. So this clown is a great colour, uh, really, really bold. And then also hot perch. There are a few different styles of retrieves that I like to fish with crankbaits. This morning, the way I was fishing that bullhead was just simply by casting out and fishing it on a straight retrieve because the bill was just tapping the bottom nicely. And when it taps the bottom like that, it actually adds more action to the lure. It sort of makes it dart in irregular directions, which can actually switch the fish on. And it was just on a straight retrieve like that that both of those perch took the lure. So I've had a few casts with the bullhead in this swim and caught a couple of perch 
and I think there's a good chance that there's probably some more fish down there as well. So what I've decided to do is change lures and fish a crankbait with a slightly different retrieve. So I've changed to the slick slick and I'm going to fish it more on a twitch and pause retrieve. So a little bit slower and with this kind of lure there's a very good chance that if a fish takes it will be on the pause. So I'm going to give this a few casts now. We had a few more casts in the other swim, but uh, we didn't have any more bites, so I've just moved slightly upstream. I'm keeping my voice down because uh, there's a very good chance that the fish could be holding up under these reeds down here. There's quite a strong current at the moment, so there's a good chance that that has pushed the fish into the margins. So. I'm going to make a few casts across the river first and then I'll definitely make sure that I do a, a few casts along these edges because I think there's a good chance there'll be some fish there. Yeah, here we go. That's a lively pike. Whoa. <laughs> Oops. Oh. Wow. <laughs> Nearly fell in then. Well, it didn't take long to get a take in this swim. I think that was on my second cast. It might have even been my first, actually. There's another species to tick off and another lure to tick off as well. So it's a lively little jack that took a slick stick fished on a twitch and pause retrieve. Such a great method for fishing that lure. Although the lure came out in the net, that pike absolutely smashed that slick stick and it's actually damaged the trace. So I'm just about to cut this trace off and I'll tie on a new one. It's always a good idea to fish with a wire trace when you're using hard baits, even when targeting perch, chub and zander, because you never know when a pike might take your lure and it's always best to be on the safe side. To be honest, I don't find that it affects my catch rate even when I'm targeting smaller species like perch and chub, because I think they're more focused on the action of the lure. It might have spooked. I'm not sure. So I'm only whispering. I'm not actually sure if you can hear me, but uh, I've just had a really nice perch follow me in. Uh, I think it might have been over three pound, but I'm not sure if it spooked. Basically, I was just fishing the slick stick, and uh, I was just about to lift it out of the water. And because there's a little bit of a tinge of colour, I only just spotted the fish just before. I lifted the lure out and it just turned away and I'm not sure if it spooked but uh, if there would have been a little bit more visibility I would have paused that lure because the slick stick's perfect for when you get a, a perch or a fish follow you in because it's a not particularly the most buoyant of the Salmo range. You can just leave it to hang when you get it back to the margins and often just pausing it right at your feet will make a fish take. The slick stick is one of my favourite lures to fish when the water temperatures are really cool. In the winter months, bait fish tend to congregate into tight shoals and 
if you can find those shoals, fishing the slick stick in and around them on a twitch and pause retrieve can work really effectively for all predators. Although the lure is floating, it's got it, it's not the most buoyant of the Salmo lures, so it actually just hangs really nicely. So often the way I fish at this time of year with the slick stick is I'll cast out, just give it two or three turns just to get it down to the required diving depth and then just pause it for two or three seconds and then just draw the rod to the side. You can almost feel the lure kick just three or four times. You don't need to impart too much movement into it, it's just literally to get it to flash. And that is perfectly represented an injured bait fish and it's an easy meal. Most of the colours in the range are fairly natural, so I caught that pike earlier on on the real bleak colour. But we've also got some holographic colours as well, such as holographic stickleback, holographic brown trout, and a few other very natural colours in the range too. Just slip that pike back and I'm going to finish off covering the rest of this swim with the frisky. The reason I changed was because this is quite a deep little pool here and the frisky dives fractionally deeper than the four and a half centimetre hornet and it's got a fantastic wriggling action as well, um, the kind of action that can just switch fish on. So it's tapping the bottom really nicely at the moment and just giving out tons of movement. It certainly worked. Oh, that's a nice fish. Oh. only just fits in the net. This fish actually made me jump when it took the lure. I might have mentioned earlier on that I'm going to pay particular attention today to casting along the margins because there's quite a strong current and it's likely to have pushed bait fish and the predators into the slack water. And I'd just cast along a reed bed in the margins and I'd just been retrieving a frisky back and I was just about to lift it out of the water and this fish absolutely annihilated it. There are a couple of different models of jointed crankbaits in the Salmo range and the one I've been using this morning is the Frisky which has got a slightly deeper body almost resembling a roach whereas the other models, the Fanatic and the Pike are a bit more streamlined and resemble the shape of a minnow or a small pike for example. There are two different sizes in the Frisky range. There's a 5cm deep runner which I've been using this morning that dives to around about six foot. And then you have the seven centimetre friskies. There's a shallow runner, which dives to around about three and a half to four foot. And then a deep runner, which dives to around about seven foot. So you're covering two different areas of the water column. Because of the clarity of the water, I've mainly been using natural colours today of all crankbaits and the colour I chose when I clicked on the frisky this morning was real dace but another one to bear in mind for fishing in clear water conditions is silver blue orange. Jointed crankbaits can be especially effective when fishing in coloured water as well because of the amount of movement they produce. So fishing a bright colour such as real hot perch or hot tiger can be especially effective. They haven't got rattles, but when the back of the lure swims from side to side, it almost makes like a clicking sound, which gives off noise and is added attraction, really, for the predators, especially when fishing in murky water. 
So now that I've caught a couple of fish on the frisky, I think it's time to change lures again. And I think I'm gonna try the butcher next. Oh, that looks like a chub. I hope it is. It is. Oh, it's a nice one as well. Yes! <laughs> what an absolutely mint looking chub that is. I had quite a few casts in this swim before this fish took, but uh, there's a floating raft of weed just behind me and it looked too good not to make a cast there. So I'm using a sinking butcher and I cast to the floating raft of weed, let it sink for a couple of seconds before beginning a steady retrieve and then this fish nailed it. I just caught that fantastic looking chub on a butcher, which is one of the smaller crankbaits in the Salmo range. There's a floating and a sinking model. The floating one dives probably to around about three or four foot deep, which makes it ideal for fishing on shallow gravelly runs. Uh, if you want to trot underneath uh, overhanging bush or tree and then begin your retrieve. Or you could fish the sinking model, which is what I've been fishing just now because this is quite a deep section of river and the great thing about the butcher is that it's got a fair bit of weight to it so not only does it make it nice for casting a long distance and covering lots of water but also if you are fishing deeper stretches where the fish may be hiding under undercut banks then what you could do is cast to a feature and then just leave the lure to sink for a few seconds before beginning your retrieve. That way the lure's going to sink right in front of the fish's nose and what with the current pushing the lure towards the fish it will just look really natural and often works. It just did then so it's definitely one that's worth a try on small to medium sized rivers. So far today I've managed to catch on four different models in the Salmo range. The first two fish, both perch, were caught on the bullhead. Then I caught a jack on the slick stick, then a couple more pike on the frisky, and then I just caught that stunning chub further upstream on a butcher. And I really want to try and make it to catching on five different lures in the Salmo range today. So I'm going to try and catch a fish on the executor. Whilst I've been fishing, my dad's been fishing further upstream and he's just caught this cracking perch. Um, we've just measured it and it was 41 centimetres. And <clears throat> what did you catch it on? The executor, five, five centimetre executor. And how were you fishing it? I was just fishing it across that shallow river there, just cast across. Um, just fishing it across that sort of gravel. And yeah, and that's, that's the bigger one, isn't it? That's yeah. the nine centimetre. Oh, it's the nine centimetre, sorry. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> if that's the biggest perch of the day, you're going to be rubbing that. In my face on the on I the journey home, I think. <laughs> Shall we get him back? Yeah. Yeah, let's do it.
Yep. Here we go. Yes! <laughs> the light's starting to go now, and I must admit the pressure has been building up a little bit because uh, I did try the Executor for a little while, but uh, decided to change to the Minnow. And my dad has just caught two fish on the Executor, so I've been thinking, oh, should I have stuck with the Executor? But I've persevered with the Minnow, and it's paid off. Uh, I've managed to catch on the fifth different Salmo of the day, and it's actually the smallest perch of the day, but it's absolutely immaculate. I've just put back my last fish of the day, which was caught on the minnow. It's one of the oldest lures in the Salmo range, and it perfectly resembles one of the main prey items that you find in small rivers like this one. There are two different sizes in the range. There's a five and seven centimetre model, and there are floating and sinking options as well, available in a wide variety of colours. Because the light's going a little bit now, I was using a fairly bright colour, that stands out nicely because the water's got a little bit of a tinge of colour, but there are a mixture of natural and bright colours to choose from. Wow, what a day. <laughs> the fishing's been fantastic. Uh, we've caught three different species and we've caught on five different, well, including Dad's fish, it'd be six different Salmos. So, uh, got to remember them all now. The Bullhead, the Slick Stick, the Frisky, the Butcher, the Minnow and the Executor. <clears throat> yeah, it's pretty awesome, isn't it? Yeah. Can't wait to get back now. 